Welcome to Laravel API development with Vue.js single page application from scratch. The following episode is going to be an excerpt from the full course now available on Udemy. If you're interested in developing robust Laravel APIs with a front end built on Vue and Tailwind CSS, then this is the course for you. We go into great detail talking about things like authentication, testing, Tailwind CSS, Vue.js, Laravel, PHP unit, and so much more. So I hope you'll join me for the full course. Go ahead and click on the link in the description to get sent to the Udemy page where you can purchase the full course. I hope you enjoy this episode. If you browse through the exercise files, you'll find a section for screenshots. And what I've done here is I've just simply opened the login view. And this is the view that we're going to be implementing using Tailwind. Now the logo here for our project is also included as part of your exercise files. So you'll be able to follow along and recreate this login view exactly the same. So why don't we get started? Let's go back to PHP storm. I've got the login.blade file. You can find that inside resources, views, authorization, and then login.blade.php. Now this is the file that we added that BG red 400. And right now, to be honest, of course, it doesn't look very pretty mostly to do with the fact that we erased all of bootstrap, but it's still referencing those bootstrap classes. So let's go back to PHP storm and I'm going to undo the BG red 400 because we don't really want to do that. So what is the first thing that we need to tackle? Well, if you notice this bar here, this whole section is centered vertically and horizontally. So why don't we start with that? Let's go back to PHP storm. And then this container right here, we'll keep using it as a container for our form. So this is wrapping the entire design. So we need to add MX auto and that will center it from left to right. But then we need to do H full. So then this section here needs to take up the entire height of the browser. Then we can use flex. That way, everything inside of this will actually flex and take up all of the room that we need. And we can justify center and then we can use items center. That way, the entire thing is centered on the browser. Let's take a look. Refresh. And sure enough, we are centered vertically and horizontally. However, this still needs a width because right now it's just whatever the width is of the content. So if we take a look at this, you see it's just the width of this forgot your password section because that's what it's doing. Let's try a width of 64. Let's get rid of all of this and try a width of 64. And just to see it, we do need some sort of background color. That's going to help us. So how about BG blue 900? Okay, so now we have that centered and we do see that we have a little bit more breathing room. Now we do need a little bit more. It feels like it's still a little tight. If we zoomed in just a little bit, I think this is more of the size that we'd be looking for. So this is still too small. Now as a default, 64 is the maximum. There is nothing bigger than 64. So we're gonna have to do something custom for that. And that's where the Tailwind config file comes into play. Let's pull that open right now, Tailwind config, and we can add an extension here to our theme. And we can extend it, and let's go ahead and extend the width to include a new figure of 96. And this will represent 24 rem. If you take 96 and you divide it by four, that's where we get the 24. So a width of 64 divided by four is 16 rems. So a width of 96 divided by four equals 24 rems. And that's where we get that figure from. So let's go back here. And now we're going to have width of 96. It's our new 96 width that we added. Okay. Let's go back to the browser, hit refresh. And sure enough, it is now wider. So this is the way that you would add your custom configs and your custom widths for your particular design. So in this case, this is more of what I'm looking for. When we add a background here of gray 300 and let's check that out. Now we have that match background. Check it out in the preview here. You see how the background is not totally white. And now we will take care of the fact that this is supposed to be the full entire screen. But right now we are still inside this confined because we still have this Laravel and login and register. We'll clean that up in just a second. These corners are supposed to be rounded and maybe add a little bit of shadow. Check it out in the preview. You see these are rounded. You can tell right here. And we do have a small shadow going all the way around. So let's add that now back to PHP storm. So we'll go ahead and add rounded LG 
It's a little bit bigger than just your regular grounded. And let's add a shadow of XL, this one right here. Refresh, and that's looking better. So why don't we take care of this right here and the fact that this is not full height just yet. So to do that, let's jump into our layouts. And of course, right now, this is still riddled with all of this navigation. So why don't we comment this out for now all together. And so what we'll need to do with this main content is we need to give it a height of screen. Basically, go ahead and take up the entire screen. Let's go back to Chrome, hit refresh, and sure enough, okay, so this is looking much, much better. That is way closer to our preview right here. Great, let's keep going. So now all of our content is still butting up against the edges. So of course, we need to give it a little bit of breathing room within this box. So why don't we do that with a padding? back to our login view, we want some padding inside our container. So why don't we do that inside this width right here? We want that to have a padding. Let's try a padding of four all the way around and see what that looks like. Back to Chrome, refresh. Okay, let's check out the preview. I think I got a little bit more than that. So why don't we try six maybe, padding of six. Refresh. Yeah, that's looking better. So now we have that logo, this logo right here that I designed for the course. So why don't we pull that up? That's an SVG and it's going to be inside your exercise file. So let's browse to our finder and let's go back up one directory into SVGs. And inside of here, of course, we have this jot dash logo dot SVG. Now we could pull it in as a single file, but I feel like copying and pasting the actual SVG right into it would be a better choice. So let's go ahead and pop this open in PHP Storm, and there it is. So this entire thing, we're just gonna copy this out of here, and let's paste it right over the top of this, right here. Hit paste, and let's just take a look at what it does. Back to Chrome, refresh, and sure enough, our logo is in. So pretty cool way to have a really high quality basically infinite quality, really, logo with a very low overhead because SVGs, they're text, they're not images, and they're fantastic for things like logos. So that's the way that you would do that. Now notice here that included, I've included three CSS classes right inside the SVG. SVG is a typical HTML tag. So you can add any classes. These three classes here are classes that come with Tailwind. So we have fill current, and then we have text white. If you change this, if you wanted the logo to be a different color, for example, we can say text red 400, for example, and let's check that out in the browser. Hit refresh, we can change the color of that SVG. But for now, of course, we want it to be white. And then we have a width of 16. If you wanna make that bigger, we could do a width of 32, for example, and it makes it much, much bigger. Great, so that is the nice thing with bringing in an SVG. What's next? So we have this welcome back and enter your credentials below. So why don't we add those right underneath the SVG. We'll do an H1 for welcome back and then we'll do an H2 for enter your credentials below, right? That's what it says right here, enter your credentials below. Okay, so now let's take care of formatting those two things. Refresh, of course, it doesn't look great right away. And right off the bat, we see that there is quite a bit of padding between the logo and this section right here. So one thing you can do is you can add padding to this element, which would push this section down. However, it makes more sense to add padding to this element instead, because this padding right here is not affecting the logo, but it's affecting this welcome back text. So it makes more sense to have the padding on this. And this is part of the learning process of using a utility based CSS like Tailwind is you kind of have to get used to how things are structured. Now at first it seems like you're adding a lot of classes, but at the end of the day, this ends up being much cleaner than a big CSS file. So let's add some classes to our H1 here, starting with the text white, because that is text white. And then let's look at the size of the text. So we'll just estimate to be maybe text to Excel. And finally, let's add that padding. Let's try a padding top of eight, something quite large. Let's go back to Chrome, refresh. Okay, so that's looking good. I think it's still a little small. I think this text is a little bit bigger. So maybe let's try three Excel instead. Save, back to Chrome. Yeah, that's looking better. All right, now enter your credentials below. It's kind of a blue tone, it's kind of muted, and it does have a little bit of padding there, so let's take care of that. So let's add some classes to this H2 right here. Start with a color, maybe text uh, blue, let's try 300. So text blue 300, 
Yeah, that's close. Let's check it out. Yeah, I think that's dead on. So we still just need a little bit of padding over the top. As we see here, maybe not. It might be okay. So up next, of course, we have this whole entire section here. So we have two input tags and they are formatted nicely. Now, ideally, of course, this is the section that you would type into and this up here is just a label. So for part two of this, let's go ahead and handle these input fields.